Most of you have a can of this in your cupboard. Someone suggested that we do this story and this bottle's really cool. So let's see what the story holds on this episode of Antique Bottle Stories. <music> Ebenezer Norton Horsford, that's a mouthful, was born in 1818 in New York. His first work was as a surveyor in New York, and he was studying civil engineering as well as chemistry, mathematics, natural sciences, and he was a professor at the Albany Female Academy for a few years. He probably met his wife Mary there because she attended that school as well. Then he went to Germany for two years to study analytical chemistry. When he came back, he was appointed professor of applied science at Harvard. Professor Horsford founded the Rumford Professorship of Chemistry at Harvard University, and he remained professor there from 1847 to 1863, so 16 years. During this time, he came up with many inventions, mostly chemistry related, and he ended up taking out about 30 patents for those inventions. He was also a dean of the Lawrence Scientific School. And he was also involved in other projects like studying what materials would be best for water pipes in Boston. In 1855, his first wife dies and she's only 31. Two years later, he married Mary's sister, Phoebe, and he ended up with five daughters total. Here he is in 1855 with his first wife, Mary, and their first three daughters. During the Civil War, he was appointed a position at the Boston Harbor, making plans to carry out supplies if enemies approached the harbor. In 1857, over in Providence, Rhode Island, is the first time we see Horsford working with a guy named George Wilson. Now, George Wilson was also born in 1818, so they're the same age. George's wife is named Clarissa, and they have six kids. Now, George Wilson is a very smart guy too. He started working at the age of 17, working in wool sorting. Well, three years later, he was an expert in the business, and being that he was very mechanically inclined, he understood all the machinery in the mill. He ended up going to Shelburne Falls Academy in Massachusetts, and he became a teacher there. From there, he moved to Chicago and opened an academy there. Finally, he moved to Providence, Rhode Island, and then he began a manufacturing business called George F. Wilson and Company. And he's a few years into this venture when he seeks out Eben Horsford for some of his ideas, and they become business partners. History says it was around 1855, but I see his company stays the name George F. Wilson and Company up to 1861. It doesn't change names until 1862. At this point, he goes from being president of the company to being treasurer of the company. But he still basically runs the company. He continues to run it just like he normally did. With his knowledge of the mechanics, he invented many improvements along the way, making production more efficient. He invented other inventions not pertaining to the business as well, having to do with steel manufacturing, paper manufacturing, and lighthouses. He also spent a lot of time in agriculture, coming up with methods of fertilization of soils. So let's get back to Eben Horsford again. Like I said, he started working with Wilson while lecturing at Harvard. So I was wondering how much of a commute that would be. Well, now, if you were traveling 95, it would take you over an hour to drive there. So in 1857, I would imagine it would take much longer. But I imagine he didn't need to go there too often. Professor Horsford never moved to Providence, Rhode Island. He stays living in Massachusetts the whole time. So I was wondering where the name Rumford comes from. Well, Horsford picked that name, which honored the scientific achievements of a guy named Benjamin Thompson, Count Rumford who died before Horsford was even born. But he also occupied the same chair at Harvard before Horsford occupied it. Now, I won't get into too many details about Benjamin Thompson, but at some point he was made a count and he was able to choose his title, which he chose the title Count Rumford. Rumford was the early name of Concord, New Hampshire. This is supposedly the portrait of Benjamin Thompson right here. 
So Horsford was in charge of producing the chemicals and Wilson was really the business manager. In 1861, Horsford published The Theory and Art of Bread Making. One way bread was made is by adding bicarbonate of soda, otherwise known as baking soda, to sour milk. The reaction of these two would produce carbon dioxide, resulting in air bubbles trapped in the bread, hence a lighter, fluffier bread. At some point during Horsford's experiments, he found out that cream of tartar mixed with baking soda also had the same effect. So the first product the company produced was called Horsford's Bread Preparation, and that worked well for a while, but bakers found that they still needed a third ingredient, cornstarch, to get the results that they really wanted. So Horsford worked on perfecting the perfect ratio, and then he released Rumford Baking Powder. I am learning this for the first time that that is what's in baking powder. <laughs> Horsford's acid phosphate was also a popular product. Although I don't know really what was in this product, they patented it in 1868 and it was produced into the 1940s. So what you would do is you would take a teaspoon of it and mix it in a glass of water and add some sugar to it to make a drink that resembles a lemon lime refreshment. This tonic was also sold as a treatment for mental and nervous exhaustion. Rumford did a lot of advertising. So here's a few ads. And they developed thousands of recipes in their own kitchens, and they gathered recipes from average housewives. This is what the factory looked like in the 1880s. So George Wilson died in 1883 at age 64. I see at least one of his sons, Ellery, is working at the plant. There's also a Benjamin here, but I haven't figured out who he is yet. In the paper, it says that Wilson was worth about a million dollars and that he disinherited most of his children and that six days before he died, he revamped his will and he donated $100,000 to Brown University, $50,000 to Dartmouth College for their science departments. Apparently, the two boys were given five-sixths of the total inheritance and the girls were to split the rest. The girls ended up taking it to court and I think they were awarded a little bit more than they were supposed to. Eben Horsford died 10 years later in 1893 at age 74. Now weirdly, I didn't really find an obituary for him in the paper right then, but in 1916, someone wrote up a life story for him. After production stopped at the plant in Providence in 1968, the factory stood vacant like a lot of other factories. And in 2006, someone decided to renovate it. So this factory ended up as a little community center, complete with apartments, restaurants, and shops. It's called the Rumford Center. And when I looked it up, I realized that this area of town is also called Rumford, Rhode Island. So in the beginning, the bottles were made of clear glass, but they found out that the powder would become calcified whenever it was stored for a long time. So to try to hide that, they started making these teal blue bottles. By the time they switched to machine-made bottles, they were more green. Here's someone's collection, and I just love the colors of these. At some point, they stopped embossing the bottles and they only did paper labels. So mine is one of these teal ones. It's uh, blown in a mold. It's got eight sides, and it would have had the paper label like this one, and it says Rumford Chemical Works with a W at the top. The W stands for George Wilson. And this particular bottle could have likely been produced while Wilson or Horsford was still alive. I would say 1880s, 1890s, maybe somewhere in there. And that's it for today, guys. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>